Hello, everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribers button and give this video a thumbs up. Jason's sitting in his auto, looking nervous as he watches Commodity, also makes a call to Spinelli's phone. Maxie answers and says Spinelli's playing with the kitties. But Jason wants Maxie to call Anna to check in and see if she picks up. He wouldn't tell her anything but that. Anna's in bed with Valentin, watching him while he sleeps when her phone buzzes. She answers, brooding, wanting to know why Maxie is checking on her. She passes Jason's communication along. But as Anna says she's forfeiture, Valentin gets up, tosses the phone and starts kissing her. He asks if he was featuring or last night happed. It did, and she's happy to be with him. But she can't spend the day. He asks her to stay, and he'll make breakfast. Also, they start kissing again. Maxie calls back and tells him Anna is fine. Also starts bombarding him with questions, only for Jason to get a textbook from Anna causing him to hang up. She's fine, and he needs to go before V spots him. Downward, Anna's going through the living room, and here's a Wong in the kitchen. She asks if Valentin needs help as she rifles through his stuff and finds a satellite phone hidden in his books. She puts it back as Valentin comes in with breakfast. She's taken suddenly, however, when he says he'd like to spend the rest of his life trying to impress her. She wants to and loves him, but their lives do not fit. It's insolvable for her to imagine a life together after what she did for Charlotte. Insolvable in Port Charles, but perhaps not away. He responds. He could have left at any time, but he didn't because of her. He can't give up on them getting back together. He asked her to at least consider the possibility. She will, but she has to go. He walks her out and promises to talk hereafter, kissing her farewell. She composes herself outdoors and leaves as Valentin watches from the window. Brennan joins Carly in the caller room and demanded to see you, she says. She needs his moxie working for the WSB, but doesn't know if she can trust him. You can't. He clarifies she's the only one she can trust. Suppose precisely about who she confides in. With that said, the only thing he stands to gain if she confides in him is a return caller. She tells him about the FBI's substantiation against her and how it was used against Jason. You've gotten yourself into quite a situation then, haven't you? He tells her the FBI, all no way, recognized their agreement with Jason. Finn, meanwhile, leaves a communication on Chase's phone, telling him not to do this. Violet needs him and he needs her. He hangs up and there's a knock at the door. It's Diane. She hands him clones of the exigency court order granting Chase guardianship of Violet and a restraining order bearing him from coming near Violet. He flips out and she tells him they could not have gotten the exigency guardianship order without good reason. Finn asks if she allowed about the damage she's doing to a nine-time-old ripped down from her father. Diane passes along the communication that Violet is doing great and having fun, and when she tells Finn his son is staying to break her breath holding record until he can watch her, he breaks down. You can't take my little girl from me. She leaves after advising him getting arrested in front of his son will make effects worse. Finn pulls it together, picks up the phone as soon as she's gone, and calls Scott. When he gets over, Finn lays it all out, asking for help. Scotty asks what happened with Tracy and Violet. But Finn insists the papers exaggerate what happened with his bad night. Scott looks uncomfortable as Finn harangues about the Quartermains, lying to Violet, Brooklyn, and Chase, always looking to steal his son. He says Finn needs someone from N.A. or the sanitarium to go to club for him. But Finn admits he quit his job. They can sue the sanitarium for vilification. Scott can keep all the plutocrat they make. Finn just wants Violet back. He rants some further, asking why Scott isn't taking notes. I would if I was taking the case, but I do not. It's not just the documents. Chase is doing what he has to do, not what he wants to do. You have been bored from seeing your son. 
Scott shouts as Finn goes off again. You can't fix this until you fix yourself. Back at his place, Sonny comes home and Ava notes Regil must have gone well. She didn't see him last night. He tells her to get used to it because you're going to be seeing a lot lower of me from now on. She's moving out. Ava wants to know where this is coming from. She offered to leave many months agone. And he said no. She took it to mean she could stay as long as she wanted. Sure, he says. But effects change. We're over. And that's it. That's all you need to know. She says she'll be out when she finds a place. But he says no. She'll be out now. And Avery will stay with him until she finds a place. She's not staying another night. He calmly tells her. We're done. She tries using Avery to stay, and Sonny says their sprat lived with them piecemeal for times. She'll be fine. He made up his mind. Ava tries telling him that she's the only one he can trust, also goes off on everyone differently in his life. Why? Sonny demands. Does she have an angle? Everyone has one. Plutocrat, power, vengeance. They get into her getting Alexis disbarred, and Ava says she did everything right. She inked an affidavit. Who are you to judge? Sonny yells, you killed Connie. Perhaps I should subscribe an affidavit against you. He also gets into how she was responsible for Morgan's death, and Ava gets emotional saying she's truly sorry. She loved him, but Sonny won't lecture her. She's not the reason that his family lies in shambles. There's only one thing that all their troubles have in common, you. Jason stops by the sanitarium to check on Liz, and they talk about Violet and how she's doing. The Al-Anon meetings are helping, and Jake is doing well. He also is not as angry at Jason presently. He's going to keep trying with Jake to make sure he knows he's there for him. Jason's going to try to get baseball tickets, and Liz says that's great. But she's not going to tell her son what to do. She does hope he'll go with Jason, however. Outside, Anna and Jason meet, and she tells him he didn't have to stay outside of Valentin's house all night. He's dangerous, but not to her. He's trained in surveillance, and she's honestly surprised he didn't discover Jason. She tells Jason about the phone, but didn't have time to get information. It seems like that's how he conducts business for Pikeman. In the show's final moments, Scott runs to Liz demanding to know why she didn't tell him Finn was in similar bad shape. He could have helped her and the boys if he'd known. Scott tried to get through to Finn, but he doesn't suppose he did. He knows commodity about this, and Finn has to hit Gemstone Bottom first. He doesn't know. Everyone's is different, but he does know it's going to hurt to watch. But he'll always be there for her and the boys no matter what. Over at Finn's, he eyes up the papers, gashes in his eyes as he cuddles Violet's bear. He also makes a call, ordering two candles of vodka. He gets the delivery, but his hand starts shaking as he goes to drink straight from the bottle. He looks at the papers, shouts, and oh, and tosses them both against the wall. Brennan tells Carly that Jason's too useful to let go. They'll find further ways to work him until he's tapped out or dead. And as soon as he's not useful, they'll put Carly in captivity. The government no way leaves charges on the table. Carly says it's no way going to be over, isn't it? Brennan says she's got time on her side. She can prepare for court while Jason gets what the FBI wants. Someday, she'll have to defend herself in front of a jury. She thanks him for his advice and leaves. Jason asks if Anna can get back into Valentin's house. Yes, but she can't help but feel like she's betraying him. But the job is the job. They can't allow Valentin to get down with his crimes. Val, meanwhile, is on the phone, organizing a payload, telling someone that Sonny wouldn't be a problem. He's coming piecemeal at the seams. All he needs is one last push. Carly cries to Spinelli that she has to fix this. She has to make it right. Molly cries in TJ's arms and says, We were wrong to trust my family. Chris Data asks Ava, Do you want to do that honors, or shall I? Kate says, I'll surely drink to that. 
Violet asks Brooklyn, what if he thinks I didn't love him presently? Chase calls someone for help. Then smothers at Tracy. If anyone tries to stop me, I'll call the police. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.